a Ryzen 9 processor, up to 64GB DDR5 RAM, Thunderbolt support for external GPU and bunch of amazing specs in this almost pocket-sized mini PC. It's the new Morphine M600 and now I'm asking myself the very same question, does it live up to the expectations? So let's inspect! Mini PCs, they become so interesting and exciting in the past few years, mostly because we notice the trend of mobile technologies very quickly catching up and almost matching the performance of desktop grade hardware. And what AMD have done with the Ryzen processors and their remarkable comeback is just one of the best success stories in the x86 segment in the past few years. So, this year is obviously based on an AMD CPU, the line that they have presented in 2022. It's done by Morphine, has a starting price of $599 with a few catches I'm going to discuss in a moment. And I really was curious to try it out because it promises superb performance based on the Ryzen 9 inside with DDR5 memory and a lot of 2023 flavor in terms of hardware, but is it good enough? Morphine is a China-based company and they have become vastly popular last year with the release of the ultra-small M6 model, which is also among the most affordable Windows 11-based mini PCs to date. The M600 model, being the latest from their portfolio, appears to be something like a flagship and claims to be among the most powerful mini PCs ever designed. As for competition, B-Link, Minis Forum, Gigabyte and some models from the big US brands, which might be considered, but Morphine's pricing is quite attractive and hard to beat, are there many corners cut? Well, the unboxing kind of reveals one or two of them. Sadly, during transportation there have been some accidents apparently, so I got my pack deformed. The size of M600 is slightly bigger than some other mini PCs, which you can notice right away. What I feared the most has unfortunately come true, and looks like the bottom of the mini PC that I got is also slightly deformed. Hopefully this won't have any negative impact on the performance and the operation. So, I definitely think more fine could work on the package, because nobody wants to see a $1,000 device getting such kind of issues. We can turn this challenge into opportunity though, because now we know that the case is metal, and if that was plastic, it could have already been broken. There are some ports, majority of them are at the back side, there also are USB 3.2 ports on the front, as well as a Type-C port which also supports Thunderbolt. Does it mean that we can easily connect an external GPU? We're gonna find out in just a minute. From the accessories, additional connector for 2.5-inch drive, a VESA mount, a 120W charger, which I assume is the same as those used for most Asus laptops. So what we seem to find here is so far excellent. Before we take a look in the internal layout, let's quickly go over the most important specifications. We already mentioned the octa-core Ryzen 9 HX CPU, RAM in my case is 32GB DDR5, Graphics is AMD Radeon 680M, supported monitors are up to 8K at 60Hz, two M.2 slots for NVMe storage, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, a bunch of USB ports, one of which is USB 4 compliant, two speedy LAN ports and the box comes with pre-installed Windows 11 Pro. Pretty sure that looking into all these connectivity ports, a lot of Apple users would be at least upset, probably they would be cursing the fact that Apple are not including that many ports in their MacBooks and kind of want to make you buy additional dongles. And uh, luckily this is a Windows-based mini PC and over here such kind of connectivity ports are included on the rear and on the front side and even two LAN ports, you know, which was kind of a nice surprise. Now. With its base configuration, the Morphine M600 has the potential to be a great mini PC. And I say has the potential because the standard configuration has some catches. For instance, you can buy this mini PC just for the platform without RAM, without storage, which could be actually a good idea. The configuration that I have has a Ryzen CPU inside. It has 32 gigabytes DDR5 memory. This is good. As for the NVMe drive, I'm going to comment in just a moment. But most interesting is the processor. This is equipped with the 6900HX. This belongs to the 2022 portfolio, very powerful. H 
indicates the premium line of mobile processors made by AMD, and X stands for Unlocked Multiplier, which probably explains why the fan can sometimes be really noisy. I guess they have included an extra powerful fan, so that when you have Unlocked Multiplier, you might try to go for some overclocking. As for the graphics inside, it's obviously integrated. You might be able to add an eGPU, but what we have inside, the 680M, happens to be, in my opinion, the best integrated graphics you've ever seen. We should of course take a closer look at the internals. We're gonna remove the bottom cover. You should unstick the rubber legs and underneath there are some screws. There are no wires attached, so there's nothing that you could harm while lifting the cover up. That's a big fan. And this here is the second M2 slot. In order to get really good performance out of the storage, I would recommend picking a TLC-based M2 drive. These are more expensive, but deliver a lot better performance. Unlike other mini PCs, this one also has a top removable cover, and in order to remove it, you need to unscrew the two screws on the back. Attention, be careful with the antennas here, because if you damage them, this is going to negatively impact the wireless reception. In here, we have access to the M2 drive, which is factory installed, so we can replace the wireless module, as it is usual for TV boxes, if the CPU or the system board fail, it will be the worst case scenario. Memory, storage, even wireless connectivity modules are replaceable and up to the latest technology standards, so a very future-proof configuration and a job well done by Morphine. On the BIOS side, you probably know what I'm about to say, it's a pity that there's nothing more advanced like UEFI, but sometimes the simpler the better. If you know what you're doing, and there are so many options to tune, like the amount of reserved RAM for the GPU, the processor TDP and so on, if you're not really sure what you're doing by changing some of these parameters, better don't. On the other hand, Morphine have developed a lot of good documentation for that purpose. Now, putting the specs-related topics aside, let's talk about the real-life performance. When it comes to playback of videos and audio files, there are gonna be zero issues. Having the latest generation processor means that it supports all the needed audio and visual codecs on a hardware level, so it won't stress the system additionally with some software encoding and everything runs smoothly. You can see an example with YouTube playback. I've intentionally set the resolution to the highest possible for the system, and even at 4K, there are no dropped frames. If you decide to use the system for office work, then perfect, just get the Microsoft Office or an alternative freeware suite and you're good to go. Honestly, for simple office working tasks and browsing, you better buy something a lot more affordable, because Morphine M600 makes best sense if we talk about intensive tasks. Photo editing with Lightroom, Perfect. Video encoding with Adobe Premiere? It is alright, but you're gonna notice that the iGPU doesn't get involved while rendering. Despite the enabled hardware acceleration in the software, I guess Adobe is going to address this over time. In a matter of fact, the performance added by the inbuilt 680M is close to what the GTX 1050 is gonna provide, and the latter one is a dedicated GPU. The Radeon 680M is the much-awaited top-tier RDNA 2-based integrated GPU and it's bundled with the majority of 2022 AMD Ryzen 6000 processors. It happens to be twice faster than the predecessor Vega 8. If we go to benchmark testing, and remember, while artificially stressing the system, it can be a good estimate how far you can go with pushing this PC to the limit, and results are decent. In fact, the CPU shows single core performance not much worse than Apple M2 Silicon, and only the multi-core score is significantly lower. But for a mini PC on the x86 architecture, this is a crazy good achievement. As for gaming, let me put it like that, it has never felt so good playing CSGO with integrated graphics. It's hard to believe how many FPS this Radeon 680M is capable of producing, and all of that without too much of stress for the system. The fan was slightly louder than usual, of course, but I almost never had it running at maximum speeds. If you want to sense how powerful it could be, it runs at maximum speed for a few seconds during posts and sounds like that. Now, the cool part is that, unlike many other AMD-based systems, this one comes with Thunderbolt support, so you're able to install specific peripherals, 
and I've decided to add an external GPU. So obviously, Razer's iconic core enclosure works, and with the extra RDX 2060, the performance is clearly superior, so if extra GPU power is needed, you can count on that option as well. But know that besides the price for the mini PC, you need to spend extra $300 for the enclosure and between $300 and $900 for a mid-range or high-end GPU. Buying the NVIDIA 4000 series and similar probably doesn't make too much sense given the bottleneck that Thunderbolt might be in such a scenario. As for storage, the part which usually excites me the most is sadly the biggest disappointment here. For such a high-end mini PC, Morphine had to offer better storage. If I were you, I would go for the plain configuration with no HD and no RAM and pick those on my own. While the crucial dims are alright, the factory-supplied M2 is just limiting the performance. Get a TLC flash, like SanDisk and Samsung have plenty of good deals. If you care about the operating system, sadly no Windows 10 option out of the box, but you can install such on your own, of course. Windows 11 is in place, licensed. Weirdly, it arrives with a PC account created, perhaps in order to avoid any issues during the setup, but I would prefer to do it myself, whether this is a security concern. Let's say I couldn't find any malware or suspicious activity, but you never know. And before we wrap up, here's a list with the drawbacks, the package issues that we've seen at the start, the two basic and slow NVMe used, and maybe the price. And here, what I mean is not that Morphine are inflating the price unnecessarily, no, quite the opposite, it's just that the hardware is high-end grade, and it really makes the price go higher, because we have a really decent processor. Inside we have a lot of RAM, options for storage, and you can see the very nice design of the box, the good internal layout, and also the capable power adapter, which is also not to be ignored. So the overall pack sounds great, it's very future-proof, and is going to guarantee smooth operation for at least another few years. Now, if you want to save some bucks, I would recommend considering buying the configuration with a Ryzen 5 CPU, because the price difference could be somewhere between $150 and $250, that's not to be ignored. And uh, generally, I believe the M600 by Morphine is currently the most powerful AMD-based device for the money that you can buy in early days of 2023. Well, could be that you have other opinions, so I invite you, comment down below. Of course, in case of questions, I'll be keeping an eye on whatever you say down there. As usual, more information about the product, link with more information and some ways to support the channel and our work here, you're gonna find in the video description area. Thank you for watching, I'm Michael, and we'll be glad to see you again in our next episode, so subscribe. See ya!